You are a critical partner in the work we do in the security sector because uh, you are the ones who communicate to the public uh, what we, we, we do or say and it, it's important that uh, you are committed the way you are to, to doing this. We are here, we are holding our regional security meeting in Nyanza. We decided to hold the meeting in Siaya. Uh, you know, traditionally, uh, we would hold the meeting in Kisumu, but we decided that because of certain important contextual issues for this part of uh, the region, let us hold the, the, the regional security meeting in Nyanza, especially because of the issues we are dealing with uh, uh, from the border uh, with Uganda and issues we are dealing with on Lake Victoria. So we had a very successful meeting. We received a report on a number of things that we are following up uh, in this region. And uh, we mainly dwelt on a number of things. So I'll basically itemize uh, three criticals that we focused on. Uh, number one, we are looking for a solution uh, on patrolling the Lake Victoria waters. As I said when I was in the last week, I mean about three weeks ago, um, with the passage of the Coast Guard bill, and now we are stepping up our deployment and our focus on patrolling Lake Victoria. Because uh, the, the, the concerns that have been raised about the security of our fishermen and so on, and, and we've been on this for quite a while. Uh, it, it, it's time for us to bring this to, to an end. The Inspector General of Police and the multi agent security team have been planning on a stepped up deployment uh, on the waters of Lake Victoria so that we can provide uh, you know, uh, sustainable long-term security. You may not be aware, but uh, we have been having very active engagement with the government of Uganda. In fact, as late as last week, our security team was meeting with the security team from Uganda, and we have also agreed on joint planning on what we need to do to address some of the concerns that uh, have been raised even by our counterparts in Uganda. I would like this to be known by the public. We don't want any more uh, suffering for uh, Kenyan fishermen on Lake Victoria. And we don't want this to be an issue anymore. So we have taken a multi-pronged approach. We are having discussions. We are having joint security discussions and planning now between ourselves and the government of Uganda. But on the other hand, we ourselves are stepping up deployment so that we have a better patrol, more personnel, more equipment. Uh, and uh, more development of security infrastructure along the Lake Victoria, as, as it were. And you will see it, as I said, uh, you may not have noticed that we had a, a strong recognizing security team that has been working along the, the lake in the last three weeks to be able to know what we will do uh, with the new Coast Guard as soon as it comes up. Secondly, you know the challenges we have had about the uh, cross-border um, uh, business, smuggling, uh, contraband goods, and what I'm more concerned about, and, and it has occupied us in the security sector for a while, which is uh, the movement of uh, illicit brews and uh, the movement of bank. Uh, let us not pretend. I am very concerned when you have a, a given percentage of our young people in the country smoking bangi, and we have traced that most of this bangi is not actually grown in Kenya. It comes from, uh, you know, uh, some, some of our neighboring countries, which means we need to do a better job. At the border, we need to do a better job in terms of uh, tracking the movement of this bangi and, 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 and drugs along this so that we are able to deal with uh, that situation. We have now put up a plan in place. You will see, already we can see significant decline in the movement of, uh, of this. And we are going to step up effort. You saw the amount of bangi, for example, that was netted in Omabe the other day and, and, and so on. So we have an operation on that particular score going on that we want to uh, deal with and ensure that uh, we address the movement of uh, uh, quote-unquote you know, illicit business as a whole. Whether it's bangi, contraband, whatever across the border, we're going to do a better job in, in terms of uh, managing the border on both sides, on the Uganda side and on the Tanzania side as, as it were. Some are details I can't discuss at a press conference, like our security reorganization and redeployment, uh, which is critical to ensure that we provide the, 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 the strong support that we need to. Lastly, there are critical issues that we are now concerned with about security. One of that that I've raised is the registration uh, of um, uh, Kenyans. Did you know, for example, that Siaya, uh, over 50% of children born in Siaya are not registered? They have not taken birth certificates and so on. Something simple like that. It is affecting the manner in which we track records, the manner in which we keep records and so on. You go to schools, kids don't have birth certificate, they are not getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, registration. So these are citizens of the country. How do we plan for them? when they are not registered? How do we plan for them when they are not in our databases? So in preparation for the national 
identity integration, integrated management system that we are about to kick off. We want to ratchet up our efforts in registering, uh, you know, uh, uh, our people. And that's why today's joint security meeting included a civil registration department. So that across the country, we want officials of the national uh, administration uh, and the police to work with, uh, uh, to work with uh, our colleagues uh, in civil registration to ensure that we, we register all our people. And whatever support they need, we'll give them. It's also going to be a multi-sectoral effort to ensure that we, 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 we register uh, everyone. Lastly, and I know that is a question that many of you would like to ask me, so let me answer it in advance. The crackdown on illegal uh, immigrants, because that is something that is concerning everyone. I, I want to be very honest and tell you this, uh, fellow Kenyans. There is no country anywhere on earth that maintains a come one, come all philosophy. That you open your doors and windows for anyone who wants to come and live and do anything in your country to do it. We should really reason and understand one thing. The prevalence and movement of drugs in our country, human trafficking, illegal businesses, in, even in little towns across Kenya, part of it has been abated by the number of foreigners in our country who are undocumented. I am actually shocked, even me, I am shocked at the number of uh, people we are arresting who have no documents and from countries I never even expected or I, I would never have imagined they are living in Kenya. We, we go to Meru and find people, you know, from Southeast Asia. We go to, 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 to Meru and find people from, uh, you know, certain countries in the Middle East. And when we ask them, oh, uh, we are doing business. Oh, uh, but okay, fair enough. You're welcome to do business in Kenya. What's your status? They say, well, I have nothing. How can you have nothing and you are living in, in someone else's country, honestly? So, this will be, I need to be very clear about this. This well, there you have it. Down. Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi giving us a few pointers on what the Nyanza Region Security Meeting um, was all about. He has highlighted that they're working towards a solution of patrolling the Lake Victoria waters in a bid to actually secure the fishermen who work around Migingo Island. And just as we were talking, we have seen the Ugandan government actually take steps to ensure that the island is perceived to be theirs in terms of hoisting the national flag in terms of um, uh, not working with the Kenyan nationals who are there, perhaps um, with a negative perception towards them. Um, what do you think of this? <clears throat> okay, before I come to that, yep. uh, let me pick from uh, <clears throat> what I've heard uh, from uh, the CS. Whatever is uh, the plan they have is not bad and we accept. But uh, I expected him today mm -hmm. as he is talking if you have a working system in this ministry to address the issue of the six, because uh, even the information I'm sharing with you here, I've gotten from uh, the police, the provisional administration, and the fishermen themselves. And I don't think I should be able to get all these when the minister himself is not aware of them. The issue of patrolling Lake Victoria is long overdue because uh, we have uh, surrendered too much to Uganda. And when you talk about uh, Migingo, I don't think uh, we need to bargain about Migingo with Uganda. An island which is five kilometers inside Kenya, even by coming and purporting to be hosting flag on it is an act of aggression. And I expected the government to react. But uh, it's like uh, this government is too slow to act. And the government of Uganda have realized that. And they will keep on provoking us. They will keep on provoking us until such a time when we'll come out and prove that we are a working country. We'll keep on talking about good security measures, what we are planning to do, how we are planning to protect our people. But if there is no action, it's useless and baseless. It's not something we can count on. Because these people are crying here. Uh, from four students is in the Ugandan jail. And the government is quiet about it. Is this uh, student going to be a sword of his release to come and sit for exams? The six, as they are putting it, there is an evidence in their empire of 55,000 demand, which was from the Ugandan forces, which the empire empowered uh, the security in Uganda for their release. And instead of being released, they were still uh, transferred to another island there to a military base, ended up in court. They're now waiting for sentence. 
then what is the government doing about it? How are they planning to release the six? How are they planning to reassure the fishermen of Lake Victoria of their security and safety to safeguard their economy as they are doing their business in the lake? Well, that's quite true. Speaking of action, on the 15th of August, Cabinet Secretary for Defense, Rachel Omamo, alongside the Foreign Affairs Chief Administrative Secretary, Ababu Namwamba, appeared before the Senate Committee of Defense over the Migingo Island ownership dispute. Now, both Omamo and Namwamba had asked for more time to consolidate complaints and give a holistic response. Now, this latest incident, according to residents of Migori County, needs um, a response from both the Kenyan and Ugandan governments. We're still talking um, to you right now, the Nyatike Member of Parliament, and you have been on receiving end in terms of complaints um, and a number of times they actually come to you as a leader. What action do you expect from both the governments, that's Uganda and Kenya, over this matter of Migingo to actually bring it to a halt? You'll allow me not to talk for Uganda uh -huh. or make any request to Uganda. Yes. But I want to direct my calls to the Kenyan government. We have a working government. We don't need to plead with Uganda. Unless we have proven that we are too weak to manage our country, is when we can plead with Uganda in our own territory. We don't need Museveni here. We don't need to plead with Museveni here. It's now Axon time. We want to see the government of Kenya in Axon to protect the territory, our boundaries. When you look at uh, our president, it was very clear when he was uh, being sworn in. He promised to protect our boundaries and the territory of Kenya which is failing now, and we need to remind him of that. We don't need any business to do any business with Museveni on uh, protecting our boundary. This one wholly is with our president, and we are not going to back down. But my message to the government is very clear. If they are tired of protecting our people around Lake Victoria, let them come in the open. And this one will allow us to develop our own uh, homegrown solutions, because someone like me, I grew up around Lake Victoria, I've visited Migingo severally looking for living. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the government is not ready to protect it, I think as a fishing community, we can develop our own homegrown solutions and to survive the way we used to survive. But we are not going to plead anymore. Okay. Um, as we finish, um, the local efforts, you're speaking of the government actually taking charge and speaking about this Migingo dispute out open. But as a member of parliament in that particular area surrounding Lake Victoria, what local efforts have you um, actually initiated to resolve the Migingo dispute? As we are talking now, it's now upon the locals, the fishermen themselves, to negotiate for their safety with the Ugandan government as if we don't have a government, which means they have uh, come to realize the government is not there for them. Now, what do we do? We submit ourselves and negotiate. These people are literally paying the Ugandan government to do fishing in Lake Victoria. So that one is already uh, a shortcut. Because when they have realized the government of Kenya cannot protect them, mm -hmm. they have already went ahead and started negotiating for their freedom, paying some uh, hefty fines to do fishing in the lake, uh, even now, when you look at that MPESA evidence, they were, they were out to buy their own freedom. This one is a deficit kind of approach. They have looked at uh, any way of getting freedom or being helped, and they have failed. So they have said, now because the Uganda soldiers are here for us, what do we do? Let's negotiate with them, because we don't have a government. We don't have anybody who is standing in for us. Those are now people coming out with a disparate measures to survive in the lake. Okay. But uh, for how long? That's the question we're asking. For how long? Well, definitely. That was Tom Odege, Nyatike Member of Parliament. Thank you so much for making time. We'll definitely keep um, our viewers updated on any resolve that is brought in this Migingo dispute. As you well know, six Kenyan fishermen have been arrested by Ugandan officials and are supposed to be arraigned in a Ugandan court. Well, we'll definitely keep you updated. Thank you so much for making time. Now, the